Hey guys, it's Linda Winter and Chris Davidson. So we have something really exciting. I'm looking forward to this, but I want to be a student on this and I want to get this kit. I think y'all are going to love this. If you're a free motion quilter, you definitely need to tune in. And if you are scared of free motion quilting, even more so you need to tune in. Okay, so we have a really cool bundle. We think it's on the website, but we're not promising yet, but it will be if it's not there yet. We put a bundle together with you with some of these things, and then we have some drop downs. So stay tuned. Don't look now, but later on, go look at the website and see what's available. And by the way, if we run out, we can get more, right? Absolutely. We have more on the way. Okay, all right. So don't worry about, oh my gosh, I got to get this now because we will be stocking it. Why? Because I'm getting one. I know for sure I'm going to get whether it's this time around or the next time that the order comes in. Okay, so tell us first what the bundle is. Okay, so the bundle itself, this is, so the reason why I put this bundle together, and I've been, I've been using this bundle for many, many years. So it is two panels, okay, that come in this bundle, and they help teach you lines and curves, and directions and things like that and with this bundle you'll get a kind of your beginner stage and then the second one's a little bit more advanced with some featherings and things and I'm also including this book okay and the reason why I like the book is because it's such a huge resource okay because we all get moving and grooving into our quilting then we forget we get stuck on um, certain patterns and then we kind of forget about other patterns and it's always good to sometimes to go back to the basics just a little bit so if you're a beginner this is one of the perfect things to get into and kind of learn because it just helps you Zeke if you will come into right about here into this center square you will see there's even numbering okay and they actually will start you off with the number and help you so we'd go two and come around three four come back up and down to the five so it actually gives you guides to help you figure out the best starting and ending points okay and we'll talk more about that as we go but you're going to learn some ruler work your cross hatching you're going to learn curves um, and just some really easy ways to get from point a to point B without putting yourself in a corner and the kit is just a lot the kit is just really cool because it's just a great resource to have okay when you're done with them you can gift them you can hang them on your walls as a wall hanging uh, to keep kind of going back to some of the things that you've learned to put in future projects and things like that or um, mine them up and put them on the floor and let your puppy sleep on them which I have done a lot we're going to talk about threads just briefly. So we're going to move over here to the threads real quick. We're not going to get into threads in detail because that's a lot, a lot of learning. So when you get your two panels and your book, we're also including this one of one of many colors um, of the glide thread. OK, and don't be afraid of color okay always think outside the box okay um just just have fun with this what i do recommend is don't start with a starky contrast very very important don't take a black don't take a, a, a red okay give yourself some freedom don't be so hard on yourself like oh my god that looks terrible no that's not what this is about this is a learning process okay and i want you to kind of start with some softer colors because they're more forgiving okay so you'll get a glide thread in the package um, just some quick other glide thread comes in a larger package you can do you can use the pretty shiny metallic threads uh, silk threads king tut for us traditional quilters that king tut gives that that depth in your stitches kind of more traditional look variegated solids just something quick to show you the different types of threads you can use okay i'm going to interrupt oh, you Linda. amy Hi. have a great question <laughs> <laughs> did y'all see that She's oh my god it. i hope you didn't see that <laughs> i it's did that was so cool yes <laughs> so 
Amy asked about water soluble thread. And I said, yes, Chris, oh, we're going to talk about there. that. So. Absolutely. Right. So that's the next stage with the threads. Okay. A lot of people say, I'm not wasting my money on this. Well, guess what? It's not wasting your money. I promise. If you'll go the next step as I was just getting to with your threads, if you will take, get you some of the, the, the water wash away threads put that in your bobbin okay so wind your bobbins with the wash away thread okay so then you can practice on top with your you and please use a softer color but use a color don't use white don't don't go white on white okay uh don't go monofilament thread either okay just use a soft pretty color a cream a beige or pastel or something like that just something pretty and soft put the wash away thread in your in your bobbin because when you're done playing around here on the top, guess what you're gonna do? So, so you're done, you've done your hearts, you've done the whole thing, you've we, you learned some stitching in the ditch here, okay? You're gonna take this, you're gonna flip it over, you're gonna have all your stitching on here, you're gonna put some warm water in a squirt bottle, and you're gonna go through, go, go squirt, 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 and what's gonna happen, that warm water is gonna hit that dissolvable thread, and then when it hits that, you can come back to the top, grab some thread and pull it all out, start over again. It's perfect. That okay. is such a cool tip. And right. everything you're talking about is for beginning. Begin. If, mm -hmm. if you have been doing free motion quilting and you're not happy with what you've done, this is the, hey, let's reset. Start mm -hmm. the reset and start over. Absolutely. This to me is just such a cool thing. I've always said, I don't see this stuff in my head when I'm looking at just a blank canvas. I need something and this is the cheater package that is so ideal. Will you mm -hmm. stop for a moment and talk about the book for a second? We already did. We no, you do it flip again? through some of the pages. We did. You Would did you do that again? You yeah. missed it. Where were I, you? I, I was answering questions. <laughs> I'm like, I'm saying, hey Rose, hey Mary, hey Pat, hey Amy. So anyway, hey, so okay, so we did. I don't want to get hung up too much on the book, but and the reason why it's a nice resource, as I was saying before, um, it still gives you, it still gives you. I think I'm gonna spit some gum out. Um, <laughs> apparently, I cannot walk, talk, and chew bubble gum at the same time. So who knew? Anyways, it's a still a very nice resource to have to help set yourself up for success. Because I'm, ladies, I'm just gonna tell you right now, we all have bad habits, okay? We create by bad habits because one, we don't know what we're doing, okay? Um, hmm, I, and I speak from experience, okay? Then, like I said, then it's just an awesome resource to have in your library of things. Then what happens, what's gonna happen? You're going to, when you've got this mastered and you've got this down, you're going to give it to somebody that's just starting. See, here's another pattern right here. We're not going to get into about repeating patterns and how to transfer this pattern onto fabrics and stuff, but we will get you there, I promise. Okay? Also, see, there's more patterns, okay? There's multiple ways to repeat patterns. Um... And that's what I'm saying. It's just a nice resource to keep in your library when you're done with it. And Kathy okay. said, so exciting may get me out of my rut or my comfort zone. So, which oh, I think is really, you yes. know, some, some of us mm -hmm. are different. We're all at different stages. It, different. But I just mm -hmm. think this is such a great skill builder, which so. is exactly what it is. So I have been teaching these skill builder panels for probably about six years. Okay. Uh, and I have taken a lot of people that tell me I can't sew a straight line and because I don't get to keep on top of my skills all the time they far surpassed me but okay so it's just a nice thing to have okay um, and like I said when you're done so back in the day we used to be able to wash these and all the print on them went away these panels do not do that now so that's why you're gonna take and you're gonna do thread painting. And you're gonna put color in these. Ladies, you can even paint on this stuff, okay? So after you get your skills done and you know you're done with it, have some fun with it, okay? Use it, like I said, put it as a wall hanging, gift it, do something with it. So I'm gonna show you guys some stuff. Um, 
to help with this. So in your kit that we've talked about, so you'll get a glide thread of whatever color I pulled from the shelf. This is, I'm also adding in a straight stitch ruler with the sticky back, okay? I'm calling it sticky back. What do you guys actually call no this stuff? No slip material. No slip material. Yes, you hear the embroidery out of me, sticky back. All right, so no slip material. And I'm adding the one that has your inch markings, half inch markings, quarter inch markings. So when you get this, apparent, Linda, you can time in on this one. What is it that they use to help see their markings? What do suggest so to them? For your markings here, I would use a metallic Sharpie. Oh. They sell a package that has a silver, a gold, and a bronze. Mm -hmm. I love that, but some people use shoe polish. When you use shoe polish, a white shoe polish on top of here makes all of this white. So Dollar Tree, any of those places, mm -hmm. you can do the shoe polish. If you have the Sharpies already, just color in and you're gonna have those numbers pop a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I love the guide that we have here because your foot goes right along the edge. Mm -hmm. When you look at a normal template, our squares, our circles, our triangles, our rulers, if we look from the side, you're gonna see they're not nearly as high as this. And when you're sewing on a sewing machine versus a quilting, long arm, a sit down, or whatever machine, we have different kind of feet. And you're mm -hmm. probably gonna talk, yep, about, we're gonna that. talk about that. But the mm -hmm. height that we have here for our free motion quilting rulers, you talked about ruler work. This is what we call ruler work. The foot goes right along the edge. When she talks about our feet, at a sewing machine versus a free motion quilting machine, you can use a Martelli ruler, Martelli rotary, I mean, a, a <laughs> template, our squares, our circles, our triangles, but it's the foot that makes all the difference. And there are two different types yeah, of feet. And, we'll and talk we'll about that. that but mm -hmm. this one is going to go in, and this is great for just channel mm -hmm. quilting, for stitching in the ditch. Stitch in the ditch. Stitch mm -hmm. in the ditch, echo quilting, mm -hmm. channel quilting. Everybody calls it something different, but your foot goes so, right along the yeah. edge. So. so, and I'm going to talk more about placement with your needle, putting your, your ruler on here. But this ruler is coming in with this kit. So back to the kit. So two panels, a glide thread, and this ruler. Now, Jessica uh, has created some drop-down menus with the paddles. Okay. Linda, can you grab that little blue uh, square yeah. over there? So these hand paddles come in two different sizes. So we've got the little ones, and they just fit right in your hands. Okay. Then we have the little bit bigger ones here for uh, for those of us that have larger hands and that want a little bit better grip. And I'm gonna show uh, a little bit on how to use them. Now, this one here, I did this on the Bella and with the smaller paddles because when I do really up close, tight work, I like that control, okay? So as we go out through all of the, uh, the different stages, I'm gonna show you them. These here is also going to be on there, which is great for, once again, your straight lines, kind of your stitch in the ditch, okay? Then you got a little bit of a curve. If you've got a, an applique, things like that, and once again, they all come back with this. Uh, no slip material. One of these days, I'm going to remember that, no slip material. No so, slipping, no slipping, <laughs> slipping and no sliding. Kidding. I say no slipping, no kidding. What we're using here instead of, instead of the acrylic. Let me grab one of these. Imagine acrylic. It moves around on you, mm -hmm. which I can see with the acrylic, but I see that it's moving. If you're trying to guide your foot along the edge, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. You're bearing down on that, and that ruler is slipping. With this, this grabs. And by the way, it also grabs. When mm -hmm. you see her stitching see. with these, Watch you this. can see it mm -hmm. grabs. So. Watch. So see it's that? locking in place. Okay. No slipping, no kidding. So when you're doing that close-up work, now everybody says go to go to Walmart, go to Home Depot, or any place like that, and get you a pair of those sticky uh, gardener gloves, or go buy those high-end, big-dollar quilting gloves. All right, I've been there and done all that. All right, with becoming part of Martelli's, guess what went in my in my trash bin after I started using these paddles. I no longer have gloves, okay? Moving to Florida, it's hot, all right? And I'm already hot natured, so having to wear gloves is the last thing I wanna think about. So once you start using these products, you'll understand the difference. And everybody that I have sold these products to with the long arms and the sit downs, they've come back and told me it is so much easier. And Zeke, we're gonna come up a little bit. So when you're doing your, your 
your quilting, okay? Typically with your gloves, you're still pushing and pulling. Then you're pushing and pulling up on your shoulders and your head is gonna be down and you just get a lot of stress. And it all starts from these fingertips. And by using the no slip material, did I get it? Um, <laughs> help, it relieves the stress in these fingers, okay? In your hands and therefore you get to stitch and sew a whole lot longer than you would any other way. And I promise you'll see the difference. Okay, so now this is where the fun begins. Are we ready? <laughs> so you're gonna laugh at me and I really don't care, but it works. And I promise you, if you will s can, can get past this part of this, you'll have a lot of fun. All right, you know, back when we were in elementary, we had to do exercises in PE, right? So we had to do our jumping jacks and things. Ladies, when's the last time you put your arms over your head and around in front of you and be silly outside with grandkids? Probably not very long. Believe it or not, when we are sitting at a domestic machine, what are we doing? We're stretching, we're moving, okay? You're gonna have to learn to dance with your machine, period, hands down, okay? And everybody thinks I'm crazy when I tell you this, okay? So, what you're going to do before you even start stitching is you're going to loosen, okay? I promise you, I know it looks stupid, but it's, it works. So, what you're going to do is you're going to, I want you to just kind of start making some half circles. And I want you to reach out, okay? And just kind of bring them back in. And it's one, it's going to help you kind of relax a little bit, okay? Then you're going to kind of go over your heads a little bit, okay? And I know it feels weird, but I promise you, when you first start doing this, you're gonna start, stop, start, stop, and you're gonna hesitate. We gotta get rid of the hesitation. This is what it's all about, is that truthfully, truthfully, downright free motion. It's that gliding, it's getting back into doing these motions, okay? If you can get comfortable, do whatever it takes. You need a little glass of wine, have a glass of wine. You need a little cocktail, <laughs> have a cocktail. Put some music on. It really, truly is dancing with your machine. I promise. I've been teaching this for 15 years, okay? I teach this way with long arms, believe it or not. All right, so what we're going to do, this is the beginner panel. All right, so here we're getting ready to start now that we're past the silliness, but it's good silliness. Well, I think it's really important, mm -hmm. though, because when we're sewing, we're hunched up we're at the hunched sewing over. machine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's so nice and about the no slip material mm -hmm. that goes under the sewing machine. Even our tilt mm -hmm. that we have for the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. If you're not sewing on the table that tilts, you know, we're doing this and we're stressed and the pedal is to the metal. We're hitting that foot pedal and we're sewing. Mm -hmm. Our feed dogs are also engaged, so no, it's pulling not. the fat. No, no, when we're sewing. Okay. Our feed dogs are engaged, so when we're sewing, it's pulling the fabric forward. With free motion quilting, it's totally free different. different. Our, free, our, our, our foot pedal, I mean, our um, feed dogs are down, so mm -hmm. we have to do the movement. So we need to loosen up our body, loosen mm -hmm. up, just mm -hmm. like you said. Yeah. Get that body loose. Music is amazing to do yeah, with absolutely. this. You know, that way it relaxes you a little bit. You kind of get into the rhythm. And everything that we're going to be doing here is a learning process. Yeah. Don't expect yourself to be really successful right off the bat. Like you said, mm -hmm. you've got to kind of change a little bit of what mm -hmm. you're thinking is and give yourself permission to try and try try again and guess what practice practice practice, practice. It's you're all not going to be perfect mm -hmm. at the beginning but when somebody looks at what you've done they're not nitpicking every little detail like you are so when you first start give yourself permission to oh my gosh I finished something oh my gosh I practiced and just like she said putting that thread in the bobbin that you can wash away and start over that's a game changer right there too so I really really think you're going to be more proud of yourself than you ever would imagine. Yeah, and don't and don't be your worst critic in this. Yeah. It, it it's not a competition. Everybody has different times that they can spend at their your machines. And ladies, please please don't sit down at your machine and try think you're going to master this the first time out. Okay? It's not going to happen. And don't expect it. Okay? So this is one of the things I want you to do. So when you get hot, when you get your, your bundle, you're going to, you know, it's okay to hit it with heat. Um, and I do like to use a little best press. Have it nice, you know, have your batting. Everybody says, oh, I'm going to use the cheapest products I have. 
Well, here's my thought on this. If you go cheap on batting and you go cheap on threads, you're not going to get the look you want. It's, it's just not going to happen. Um, you can start that way if you like, those first couple runs. But I, and I get the cost of the expense, but you're still not setting yourself up for success, okay? Um, if you will just use a, a good qual, not your most expensive threads, but a good quality thread. Don't use your cheapest stuff because then you're just going to get frustrated, I promise you. So when you get your panels, make sure everything's laid out. So right, wrong side up, your batting, and your panels. Now I like to use a spray called 505. That is my ultimately best spray, adhesive spray on the market. Please, 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 please do not use that quilter's adhesive spray. It will gum up your needles. It's, it's going to be a mess, okay, I promise. So when you do that, if you'll just do a quick little squirt, it doesn't take much of the 505, and just lay it out, kind of start in the center, smooth it out. With the 505, it is repositionable, okay? So you're just going to kind of spread it out. Then when you get to your machine, and we're going to do this, just like kind of traditional quilting, I want you to start in the center, okay? And I want you to work out, all right? So we're going we're gonna to act like we're stitching in the ditch, okay and then we're going to stitch out once once we get this under control and it's nice and stabilized you can do whatever you want okay you can go wherever you want you just need to st uh, stabilize this piece okay so we're going to head over to the m7 and get started we're only going to do a small amount of this so this piece right here talks about stippling okay this piece has got some curves going, we got lines going, a little bit of cross hatching. Um, and we're gonna probably you know, talk about uh, kind of like a scallop look over here. We have some hearts. And we're gonna touch a little bit on this one. And then we're gonna move over here to the Bella and uh, talk about feathers, okay, on the bigger machine. And um, a little bit about that. So. Zeke, if you want to show them a little bit of this panel while I run to the other machine really quick and let them see what the second panel looks like. So, Chris, can I ask you a question while you're running? Absolutely. Are you going to be talking about sewing machines, different machines that are better for free motion quilting, the throat, a table, those kinds of things? Are we talking about that at no, all today? No, we're kind of not going to get into that. Okay. Uh, our focus is definitely these panels. Okay. If you notice she's got a table attached and a nice big throat, you need something that's going to allow you to put this fabric out on a table area. But again, that may be something that we want to do at another time. Some of your sewing machines that just have a little space for you to move, you're going to find one tool will work better than another. The hoops, definitely you need some space to be able to put those on top of. And if you look, the M7 here, this is a dream machine. You know, <laughs> yeah. It really is it really just is. one of these wonderful machines that allows you to do almost everything. You've got a huge mm -hmm. table, we've got a huge throat, this is really great. This is not probably going to be your scenario that you have at probably home. Probably not. And, um, and later on for you guys that have been asking about where do we get the wash away, where do we get the 505, we'll kind of cover all of that at the end too and talk about what Martelli sells. We sell of course Janome sewing machines. Janome sergers, last week when we did a lot of surging projects with the face masks, we sold a lot of sergers. Thank you you guys, we really appreciate that. You're going to get some really great deals on Janome sewing machines, on Janome sergers if you're interested. This is a bundle that we're really focusing on today. And um, Chris, should I mention the price? I did get a price. Should um, I tell them now or should we wait? Let's wait. Because okay. only because I have very short attention span now. The older I get, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. So I just want to touch on, well, and you mentioned about machines. And I really, I thought about this a couple of days ago and then I forgot. No, but I, a lot of people do not have ruler work uh, feet for their machines, especially beginners, okay? And if you want to get into ruler work, here, here's the deal, in free motion. The main thing is, the, the number one thing is your feed dogs must drop. If they don't drop, your machine should have come with a little plastic cover, 
okay, uh, to cover those feed dogs so those feed dogs don't grab that fabric, okay. One, you, so you've got to drop those feed dogs, okay. Now for free motion. Um, if you're going to do straight stitching, like you're stitching the ditch or your lines, use your walking foot or your AccuFeed foot or whatever it is, whatever brand machine you have, whatever they call it, AccuDual Feed, um, things like that. But use those to do the straight stitching, okay? Ladies, I, I'm going to harp on this, and I do it to everybody. If you don't set your machine up and yourself for success, it's not going to happen. Okay, you're going to get frustrated, and then you're going to, you're not going to want to do it. If you'll just take the time and those few extra steps and set yourself up for success, this will happen, I promise. Okay, so what I would do then is I would take my walking foot, and like I said, you know, uh, start in the center, and you know, stitch down the lines, you know, kind of, but start in the center, you know, and kind of work out. It doesn't matter which way you go, just you know, do one side, come back, do the other side, and, and just work your way out, okay? Old-fashioned quilting, guess what? It works, okay? Um, then, like I said, once you get it stabilized, you know, go for the free motion, okay? You just want to make it behave. I do have the ruler work on, or ruler, ruler work foot on, and so I'm just going to start with the ruler work because we really don't need to see a walking foot demo. If you need a walking foot demo, let me know. Okay, so as I stated earlier, uh, what I want you to do is, we're not even threaded. I wonder what happened. We got a storm that came through earlier and we had lightning galore. So I grabbed everybody that was up front and said, shut machines off, shut them down. So there's no telling what happened at that point. And we weren't even sure we'd be able to do this today because we had hail. Oh, Weather yeah, it was crazy. Tornadoes. I mean, we've gotten warnings on our phone all morning long about this, too. So. Okay, here we go. Just had to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It does work every time unless you go too fast. So I want you to take, and I want you to use your hand wheel, and I want you to drop that needle exactly where you want it. Then I want you to raise it up, and I want you to grab that bobbin thread okay and I've got a funky index finger so I don't always grab my th thread very easily and this is where Martelli tweezers would be really oh nice yeah I we've didn't even think about tweezers, that we've mm -hmm. got the pinpoint tweezers we've got the straight tweezers any of those would work for what she's doing mm -hmm. and I would have them on the lanyard that we have so you'd have them around your neck which would be really great for her have them nearby or whatever so snippets too mm -hmm. all of those. Mm -hmm. so if your machine has the little bullseye that does the uh, tack down stitch use that it, um, you know and just go ahead and let it tack down if it doesn't you know all you have to do is just take a couple little stitches and kind of reinforce them just a little bit okay now I was talking about you know getting relaxed okay and enjoying this process. The next biggest process with this is learning your coordination with your speed, okay? If you are manipulating this fabric faster than you're stitching, you're going to get skip stitches, okay? You've got, there's a sweet spot. Everybody has it. My speed is not gonna be your speed, okay? Um, use your speed bar to slow down at first okay I want you to go fairly slow at first and then I want you to, to kind of gradually increase that speed because it's up to you to keep those stitches uniform okay so if you've ever driven a manual a stick car stick shift you know what I'm talking about it's all about hand and foot coordination but if you will use that speed control, I still like to use my foot pedal for my gas because I can stop when I want to. Some people like to just have the, the green automatic start button on and hit go. Whatever you like to do the best, but find that sweet spot with your hands and that, that speed, okay? Makes a huge difference. All right, so I put my, um, my needle exactly where I want. I'm sorry, Zeke, I've got to do it over here on this side with and I'm going to line up 
my uh, my ruler, okay? And the reason why I like using this one is because, see, my hand can very lightly just touch this. This The non-slip fabric's on going to be here, and it's going to push this fabric exactly the way I want it to. And if you want, there's absolutely no reason not to use another paddle for your other hand. Okay, and I kind of showed this the other day. I had somebody go like, oh, I never thought about that. But it does help, okay? You just have to find what works best for you. All right, so I'm just working along. I'm watching. You can you cannot watch the needle, first of all. You have to, it's like sewing. Don't watch your needle. Watch what's in front of you. Watch what's going to, towards that needle. Your needle's not going anywhere other than up and down, I promise you. Okay, so, and I'm just going to spin this. And realistically, you guys could have just kept on going straight out to the edge. You could have used, um, you know, basting stitches to stabilize it, things like that. Uh, it's up to you. I'm just going to kind of focus on this little square right here for the moment. Just kind of let you guys see how all this works. I'm going to interrupt okay. for a minute. Mm -hmm. A lot of people end up using those big hair clips to roll the fabric mm -hmm. or fold the fabric so you're not dealing with all the bulk. Yep. You guys can't see, but she's got bulk to the right. Um, yeah, Zeke's zooming out a little bit. Do you see that bulk that's there? If you roll that up and put a big clip, a clip, mm -hmm. a clip, it's really too much fabric for our zip guns with the zip clips, but those little clips that we're selling that are kind of It's a lot of fabric you mm -hmm. can use those hair clips, if y'all know what I mean, they're those big mm -hmm. hair things, or those binder clips that you could get in an office store, but that way you're not dealing with all the bulk and you can focus in on your free motion quilting. So and you notice whenever I need to adjust, all I have to do is pick up my panel, paddles and move, okay? And that's it. And I like to have my needle stay down, so I just have to keep it in the down position through the settings. And I'm just going to come right on off, right here at the edge. I'm just going to hit my little bullseye right there, and it's just a little tack down stitch, and I'm going to cut my thread. Now, you'll have to go back on the back side and trim them up uh, later on if you choose to go that way. So that's going to be your start, is going through and just doing the your squares and stabilizing this quilt okay so let's start with something a little on the simpler side and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the hand paddles out um, got them? Got them. now you can use the hand paddles you, we hadn't gotten to the rings yet we have 8 and 11 inch rings that really help and I'm gonna show those with the stippling um, so here's what I want you to do first. Okay, straight stitching, you know, it's it's pretty easy, but this is what I want you to do next. I want you to find whatever hand paddles you want or that you get. And what I want you to do is I want you to just take them without the machine running, and I want you to follow that pattern. Okay? You're tracing it basically. Yeah, all you're doing is tracing it. And you have a choice, I think, with your drop downs mm -hmm. on the palm paddles, which is what she's mm -hmm. using. These are called palm paddles. And then we have paddles. Let's see, where are our paddles? Uh, I gotta grab the, the paddles. The bigger Sorry. paddles are right here. Uh, no, we've got the other paddles. Let me find Okay. Yeah. So there's multiple paddles. I just pulled some. So, anyways, you're gonna trace that with that needle, okay? And I just want you to come back and I want you to pay attention to your posture. Okay, this is where we forget to breathe. Our shoulders come up to our ears, things like that. And if you will just take and follow this, okay, and get an idea. And you see, once once you kind of do that, because you're going to start like this. You're going to come in, you're going to zoom in, and you're going to go really, really slow, okay? Keep it relaxed. Keep those shoulders down, okay? Um, and then when you get from here and you're going super slow, when you start getting a little bit further apart and you start getting that motion that's a little bit more smooth, okay, 
when you can get that smoother motion, all right, I want you to go forward and I want you to go back both directions, okay? And, I, and if you need to do this a couple times before you turn that machine on, I want you to do that, all right? And you guys, she talked okay. about that sweet spot, and the sweet spot to me here is, where do I want my hands? How far mm -hmm. apart is too far apart? When do I need to stop mm -hmm. and move? Do you notice how she just picked up her right pan paddle and moved it closer? Your comfort level of how far away is comfortable, how close is too close, you're gonna find a rhythm. And what mm -hmm. she's doing with this tracing and moving around without stitching to me is such a great technique. I'm not doing anything that I've committed to. I'm just mm -hmm. feeling out, testing out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like testing out a couch or a whatever. Mm -hmm. What's comfortable to you will be not as comfortable for somebody else, but getting comfortable. Exactly. And I want to stop for a moment, too, and since I'm already talking. These are paddle paddles. These are paddles. The mm -hmm. We have the paddles versus the palm paddles mm -hmm. versus the hoops. We make a ton of things for free motion quilting, just like we make a ton of things for cutting. That no slip material that's on the bottom, you're going to find one tool works better for one project at one point in time in this project. You might swap out. I always tell people there's not one tool that's the best for everything. There's the one mm -hmm. tool that's the best for that particular part of that project. So you are going to want to think about what do I want to start with? Which set mm -hmm. of paddles mm -hmm. or rings or rulers would work best for me? Remember, you're getting the ruler the straight ruler with this package. And then you can pop uh, down on that drop down that Jessica has added for you and see what other options are there for you as well. So play around. If okay. you can splurge a little bit and get several of these as options, you'll find one will fit better for what you're doing at that moment. Then you move to another project and you'll like a different set for another project. Okay, and you notice I kind of turned that around in a different direction. Just because my direction is good for me doesn't mean it's going to be good for you. It's all about getting relaxed and comfortable. So now I've kind of got it smoothed out a little bit. You know, so that's what you're going to do next. You're going to go and then you're going to start stitching, okay? And it's just a matter of uh, taking your time. Remember, this is not a race, okay? And... So I just, and I'm kind of keeping this fabric like this because people always ask me, I need to see a king size quilt. I need to see a queen size quilt on there to see how to work this. And like Linda said earlier, all you got to do is just kind of roll it up and put it in there. I've, I, I started with the domestic machine quilting back in the 90s when that was taboo. It was no, 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 no. And I had a little bitty Smurf Singer machine. Okay, and I could do a king size quilt on it but it took a lot of manipulation, but it can be done. Hey, the uh, other thing mm -hmm. I want to point out, since you were talking about just kind of practicing, to me, tracing, is don't use the paddles. Put your hands on there and feel how difficult it oh, is. Oh, yeah, it's a whole your, uh, lot different with your just your hands. fingers splayed out. Mm -hmm. You're going to start to get sore fingers. Your back is mm -hmm. going to start to hurt. Because all that tension. You're going to stretch your fabric mm -hmm. more than you should. Yep. The difference between your fingers, even if you put those gloves on and you try with the gloves, mm -hmm. you're going to get, just like Chris said, they're going to get hot, but also claustrophobic. Well, and, and, and there's a lot of stress that goes in your hands. Yeah. So mm -hmm. try without and then try with the paddles, with the rings, with whatever it is that we have, and you'll feel, oh boy, is there a difference to be had with the no slip material. Okay, so. So we're just going to do a little bit of this, okay, because we have a lot to, to kind of cover. Um, and so once again, it's finding that sweet spot, okay? So if you will just, you know, once again, just take your time. My biggest thing, see now, that's going to, that's just, don't, don't try to keep up with me. And uh, remember, I am predominantly a long armor. Um, so I try to work in motions of the long armor, so I tend to swing out. Okay. Now another thing, if you will come kind of really close, when you have points, did you notice when I stopped at my points? In order to get those points, you have to come to a dead stop. If you don't come to that stop, you're never going to get a point, okay? And you don't always have to, once you get a little more comfortable, 
you're not always going to have to come and just stop, stop. And you see I kind of slowed it down. See, I didn't come to a stop, stop at that point. I just kind of did the little hesitation. Uh, I'm trying to remember to breathe and talk to you. I am one that likes to bite my lower lip when I'm doing this. Um, I'm trying not to do that. But the biggest thing is, and we're going to show the stitches here in a few minutes, is keeping those stitches even. Okay? And then what all you have to do is come back. And I'm, and I'm intentionally going to go off the lines right here. And have you ever been told it's okay to color outside the lines? And when you're doing this on a real quilt, you're not following anything. So the lines are what you're looking at. Well, That's unless fine. you will use stencils yes. and things like that. But I like this because it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Muscle memory. I'm trying to do it on my own. kind of a background and you can see those things on the white canvas, I don't see it. So I like having this. If you do this over and over again, again with that wash away uh, thread that she was talking about mm -hmm. in the bobbin, your muscle memory that you get into your body gives you that rhythm. So when you sit down with a white canvas, you've got some practice under your belt and you'll be more successful. And Linda, I'm glad you said the word muscle memory. That is the most important thing about free motion quilting ever is building that motion memory or you know the muscle memory yeah. 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 and yeah. there you go okay yeah. and, and you notice what she's done is she's followed the line there nobody's going to mm -hmm. see that original line nope. that's there on a real quilt so Sorry. if you're off a little bit again this is mm -hmm. where you give your per yourself permission i don't have to be perfect nobody's going to see where you were originally planning to go. And that's the fun of this, I think, when you allow yourself some freedom, you know, oh, then definitely. you can have a good time. Okay, here's the stippling one that I was talking about um, that I wanna kinda bring you guys in. Everybody loves the stippling, okay? Now, it's been around for a long time, and, but here's the deal, all right? It's still, those stitches still need to be uniform, okay? They still, you need, still need to um, look at your spacing, okay? And I'm just going to come in, I'm going to get my corner, and I like to use the circles when I want to work big like that. And you're going to see how easy it is. And I'm just going to secure that stitch. We'll get it out of the way. We'll stitch for a little bit and then we'll trim it. Okay. Now, one of the nice things about these is, you know, you want to make sure everything's flat and you really don't press hard on these products. If you press really hard on these products, all you're doing is fighting yourself. Okay. And you can hold them with with the knobs. You can hold them here. Um, you find what's most comfortable for you. And I'm going to kind of hold them more here so you can see how easy it is um, to uh, use this. Okay, sorry guys, too slow. And that's how easy it is to use these in uh, that bolt, okay? And then trust me, you're never going to stay on these lines with stippling. It's not going to happen. So you just kind of play with it. There's one other technique I forgot to show you about before we actually got started. Um, before you actually take it to your machine. So Linda kind of remind me that. And then all you have to do when you're ready to do that, I'm oh, sorry Zeke, is just pick that up and move it, okay? Now, the way I do my stippling, and I know you guys are going to laugh at me, and I don't care. Uh, I was an ex-nurse, and the only way I can remember stippling is a germ. Ooh. Think of a little germ, and you're making a germ, okay? So, that's all I'm doing. It's just more, and it started out back in the day as puzzle pieces, okay? I did puzzle pieces. And now, but see, I can't keep that in my head. 
All right, to me, keeping my stitches uniform and um, pretty and my spacing. Spacing also, you need to kind of, you know, you want to remember spacing. You know, you don't want to... You don't you don't want to go micro stippling and to a mirandering in one block. You want to keep it uniformed, okay? Um, so that's basically it. Um, but see how it grips this fabric? And I have some really pretty curves going here. Okay, so this is one of the easiest easiest ones to learn to do here. Okay. I'm gonna talk about the rings for just a minute. You notice she's working on the eight inch. We also have an 11 inch. You can buy the two of them together as a bundle. Also, you notice where her fingers are? She's got her fingers now outside on the fabric and on the knobs. We make comfort knobs that you can get as an add-on. If you've ever watched the video that I filmed of Rhonda Denny several years ago, she's an artist. She's amazing. She doesn't use the knobs. She'll put her fingers like here, mm -hmm. or here and mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how cool is that? Mm -hmm. She's using her fingers here. So you guys decide what it is that she would be doing. Yeah, it's all about what fits you, okay? Oh, okay, Zeke is handing me these and I'm like, we wouldn't use these together, but here are the comfort knobs. I'm like, okay. no, 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 we wouldn't <laughs> use these with this. So the rings, these are the paddles. We have the palm paddles which are the little guys, So, but these are the comfort knobs. Mm -hmm. This is what comes standard with the hoops. You can buy these as an addition. If you like the idea of put your, putting your fingers here, mm -hmm. then these feel better. Mm -hmm. So it's totally up to you. Where are we at on time, guys? Okay, so we are 10 minutes away from two o'clock. Ooh, so we need to hurry. Okay, so if I, uh, you know, once again, it's what works best for you. Um, it's all, it's a learning stage. I really, really like the ring okay and then of course you're going to get the straight stitch for your stitch in your ditch and uh, I like these paddles I'm not mm -hmm. actually sure we still make yeah, so those are not available I don't oh these aren't anymore no. oh I'm so no. sorry I had no <laughs> yeah. idea Chris has okay. at the store we've got several different products here that we used to make and what we found was that with the paddles those guys were like a paw paddles what we call mm -hmm. them they didn't fit your hand as well because you're laying them out, but it kind of, it just didn't feel as good. These versus the palm paddles, the little guys, those are to me the two choices you might make. I would, of course, always recommend the rings mm -hmm. because the rings are just great for big projects, small projects, everything. But these guys here versus the palm paddles, and again, I'm going to end up saying at some point you'll want to have everything because they're all so good. She mentioned micro stippling, and I know we're running short on time, but the micro stippling where it's really, really, really tiny and close, those little palm paddles That's are great for micro stippling. I mean, they're amazing for micro stippling. If you don't know micro stippling, just go Google micro stippling, pull up the images, and you'll see some pictures are really, really cool. So, um, so, so I've moved on to the bigger ones. It gives me a little bit more workspace, okay? And that's all you have to do is just readjust, okay? Once again, decide what works best for you in your hands, okay? So, yeah. and then what I would do is I would practice that, but remember to practice under your needle first, okay? Just without running it. Now, the one thing I wanna show you guys while it's still in my head, what I didn't do, I showed you how to, all right, so here's, here's our arrows, all right? So it's, like these stars are giving us our arrows and which directions to go you got little tiny dot lines and you got bigger dots okay to help you in your directions here okay so what that means you're gonna pick one and I would start with the little ones and I would and then you follow the little ones okay and remember I said kind of stop and you stay on those little paths the little dots first don't don't try to go dot big dot and little dots okay follow the patterns now and i and i apologize i should have done this at the other table but what i want you to do before you even start after you layer everything i want you to take your finger and i want you to follow with your finger first okay just like that but it's not just a finger and a wrist see the difference see how i'm just kind of doing finger wrist 
that is not going to do you one bit of good. You've got to use your whole arm, okay? So you're going to use that arm. See my, all right? Use the arm. It's in your arms, people. It's not in your fingertips. It's not in your wrist. It's your arms. It's that muscle memory we were talking about earlier. Remember I kind of did this thing? Okay, so when you do your arm like this to kind of get the gist of this pattern, then take it back over here to the machine and follow it before you turn the machine on, okay? And that's when you're gonna to decide to which paddles you kind of feel best for you for that specific design because they all feel a little bit differently, okay? So that kind of uh, helps with the process. Just remember if you have points, you know, you're stitching along, kind of come to a stop and then go. And do that in your practice. Get in the habit when you're practicing for those stops because you're never gonna get that point, that really pretty point if you don't, okay? Uh, any questions on this one before we go to the other one? So we've gotten thanks, great demos. You've gotten lots of hey Chris's from hey, individuals. Hey everybody. So some really great comments here. So, okay, remember just have fun with this, okay? Put, I like to turn a musical on. If I'm, if I'm in the mood for TV, which is very rarely, I wanna throw a Roger Hammerstein musical on because I know them inside out. I don't have to watch it, but I can sing along with it. Throw a radio on. Uh, do something to kind of help you relax. So we're going to head over to the big machine here now. And that's it's kind of a Bella, great... Bella Sedera, is that Bella correct? Bella Sedera. And Sidera. actually it's a great transition too because somebody just asked if we could use the 12-inch squares. We have a 12-inch square and then we have a rectangle as well. We're not really featuring those today because they're not going to be on your home deck sewing machine. You really do need a bigger throat, a bigger table space, but we do have those. They have, they come with some options. You get three really kind of guides where your foot can go along. They're not here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Do you guys see? So you're not going to use these at the same time. You'll mm -hmm. get three with they each pop in of, Yeah, they pop in and out. But you can use your foot along the edge. You're not going to use those along with this because you've got the panel for that. But yes, definitely. I started asking and somehow I got kicked off. Um, so uh, Carol had asked, could you start with the 12-inch square free motion? So you can. I think for most of you, you're going to want to use the ruler that we have and then the paddles, the palm paddles, or the 8-inch the, um, rings, the 11-inch rings. So I'm going to just start with this little, the little feathers over here. So you kind of, Zeke, so Zeke kind of knows where I'm heading with this. Excellent um, tutorial. Okay. So once again, you're going to start where here's the start here's your solid uh dot right there and here's your numbers you're going to use your finger but you're going to use that that straight arm and you're just going to remember we talked about the motions okay and there's several ways to do feathers so don't get hung up on each individual's you know way well she does her feathers like that and look with depending on my mood Depends on how I'm going to do my feathers, okay? But with feathers, the most important thing is coming back down to that spine. All this is is basically a teardrop, okay? You're going to make, you're going to start, I come up, I make my little teardrop, I come back down. And then if you break it down, it's a teardrop or it's a half a C or... Oh, it's like you, a layered paisley. Yeah, or a little paisley looking thing. Um... So it, it just, what, a half a heart, okay? A lot of people can uh, think about half a heart and they're like, oh, I can do a half a heart. Well, that's the beginning of your feathers, okay? So you're gonna get comfortable with this, okay? Then, once again, you're gonna take it right back to your machine and you're gonna, you're gonna follow that with your machine without it running, okay? And then once you do that a few times, and here's the deal. All it is is getting comfortable with that motion, okay? Once, remember the little exercises I gave you guys? Once you're comfortable, now does it make sense when I was kind of doing the circle things and stuff like that? Once you get those motions down and, and comfortable with it, you will have some beautiful feathers. 
here's this, you know, they're kind of back to the start on, you know, how to do your feathers. Uh, what they're doing is they're, they're wanting you to come up and retrace. Okay, so um, it's just getting comfortable. You've got to get comfortable with, with all these motions you're not accustomed to, okay? That's all it boils down to. These are motions you're not accustomed to. So we're going to do needle up, needle down. And normally I start at my tail end and work up um, on my feathers. Ooh, there's that storm. Kind of bring it around. And I am going to go right over top and I'm reinforcing that stitch. When it gets in my way, I will cut it. And and you guys are going to have to bear with me. I'm, I, I'm so accustomed to doing feathers that I just kind of really just go into my own thing. So following a pattern for me on feathers is really hard for me to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just start my feather here in the center. And just take your time and say, oh, I'm off the line. Who cares? All this is is a, um, what is that, circle eight right there? Okay. You can come back over, back up, and around, and bring it back down. Come back up. There's another way to do a feather. There's more than one way to do these. Okay. What works best for you? So I'm going to actually go into my mode because once you understand the gist of this, and you notice the faster, once you can get some speed and have your stitches accurate, it actually becomes easier. Going slow for me, I've been doing this too long, I make more mistakes. I think when you're really knowledgeable, it is hard to follow. It is. It is. It's really but hard. For anybody that hasn't mastered or anybody that's brand new, these panels to me are just... Oh, yeah. They are ooh. awesome. Yes. I, I think I would have maybe not been so fearful if mm -hmm. I had this to mm -hmm. start with. So what I suggest is take one one feather, do it in one color. Take your other feather, do it in a different color. Mm -hmm. You know, have fun with these ladies and gentlemen because I know there's going to be some gentlemen out there. Um, and that's the whole point. When you're done, hit that in the back with that water. You know, let it kind of dissolve, come up. All you have to do is grab a, a, cup, a little bit of thread and it pulls straight out, just like that. And you're gonna go sink, sink. And always, 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 and may need more than one, definitely two, jack the rippers or your rip it <laughs> and your little ball right here. So you can say, oh shoot, this was gonna be as a gift to stop right there cut it out, start over, okay? No big deal, thread cuts and breaks. Um, I've had a lot of people that's found out that we are we're doing this starting last week. We had a lot of people ask to continue on with this, so we do have more coming. There is a third level, and I just found that out uh, yesterday. So as we all progress together, I will progress your skills. Um, yeah, you know, so I would love for people to post pictures if you're brave enough, absolutely post pictures of your work. And mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's expecting perfection, mm -hmm. it's the mm -hmm. doing it, taking a step that, towards it, mm -hmm. and just trying it. That's the biggest thing, and saying, Look, I'm okay with it. So, I think that mm -hmm. I think that would be really neat. So, oh, now I wanted to, I got the price on the bundle, so oh, I wanted okay. to go over the bundle. So, and I'll tell you where it is too because I had to go search for it. You're going to go to martellinotions.com if you click on new products, then click on fabric. It's going to be the first one there, the bundle, which is the book which is the two panels, which is one spool of thread that she has picked out, so yeah, who I knows what you're going to But they're pastels, yeah, basically. so it's, it's really what she recommends. And then the nine inch ruler for you to use as a guide. All of that bundle, fifty nine ninety nine. I don't know hey. what the price is for the books and the panels alone, but my guess is you're getting a really great bundled price here. And remember, you have the drop down as well. When you choose the drop down, you've got several that Jessica put. I haven't had a chance to look at all of them yet, uh, but look at the drop down so you can say with this, without this, those kinds of things. And um, I posted a link in the 
the little chat area. I've been co trying to comment to everybody. Hello, if I missed you, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the great comments to Chris, too. You were, so, were getting that Hall of so. Mirrors effect when you had your phone facing oh. the scroll. <laughs> uh, there's Z. And I want to put <laughs> just a little bit in there before we before we say goodbye. Here's the deal with this. A lot of people are like, oh, my God, that's, that's 60 bucks. All right, uh, first of all, you just got a one-hour lesson with this, yeah. okay? Second of all, if you're on that quilters group, uh, the Martelli Martelli Quilters, Quilters group, group that you have to join. Then you have me, and you know that's on there often. Okay, uh, so you you really get a lot of unlimited resources. You can say, hey, look, I'm, remember we talked about skip stitches earlier, because the machine's going one speed and you're going too fast. I can help you troubleshoot. All you have to do is send me some pictures. Most of the time, when you tell me what's happening, I can tell you how to fix that. Okay. That is saving you. Look, when I did these classes in my shop, that was $120 for a three hour class. Okay, so you guys are really getting an awesome deal with this. I, you know, so. And I've seen Chris on the phone with customers saying, I've got a such and such machine, I'm having this problem, and she's diagnosed it. <laughs> so Chris is a great resource for this. I really want you to take advantage of this deal. I'm excited to start playing with this myself. I have been afraid of free motion quilting. I play with it and then I don't do anything and then I am hesitant to get back into it. This kind of thing is going to give me some comfort and some satisfaction and some real skill building. That's why so it's such a great skill what we're going builder. to do, we're going to say goodbye, but I'm going to have Zeke follow me. So this is what happens when you start with these panels and you start in the baby steps and no bad habits no bad habits we're going to break them right now or not even develop them okay so what happens when you start with those baby steps then this is what you get to move into okay this is what you get to do this is something i've been doing and, and playing with the martelli long arms um, and learning their systems and this is all free motion there is no marking there's no there's nothing for me to follow but learning their rulers um and in their machines so yes this can be done on a domestic machine there's some very high end and i do mean divas out there with domestic machine quilting i can't touch them on a domestic machine long arm i'm on their tails but uh but you can do this so we're here ask questions mm -hmm. wash away thread yes where did they get that uh most quilt shops have it uh if we have enough people that want it, I am more than happy to order and get it in here. So, so but yeah, Amazon, which I hate <laughs> for businesses, but yeah. it's there. Yeah, yeah if enough so. of mm -hmm. you guys want yeah, if it, if you want it, you know, mm -hmm. give Chris a call or post down below. We want the thread. We want the thread. And if we get enough people that say yes, we'll order it for you. Absolutely. So Chris can get anything that you find out there. Basically, it's just a matter of we need enough numbers to justify, uh, you know, absolutely. putting in a large enough order to get you all a good price. So, so I think that's yeah. it. I think we've covered it all and thank you guys very 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 much for hanging in there with us today and hope you learned something for dance <laughs> have fun bye guys bye.